Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Paste, the incredible rubberized paste. Right out of the tub, Flex Paste is super thick. It clings to the surface and it instantly fills gaps and holes. Once it dries, it turns to this, a strong, flexible rubber. It expands and contracts. Hey guys, Quarantine Hair here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Blade of the Immortal. Blade of the Immortal is a historical action series with sprinkles of fantasy. It was brought to us by the lovely Hiroaki Samura, and it was serialized in Monthly Afternoon from 1993 all the way to 2012. Imagine reading this monthly for 19 years. Our tale is set in Japan in the 1600s, I think. That's a bunch of malarkey! And it follows our main character, Manji. Manji is a very skilled and ruthless samurai, and back in the day, he, he used to be a, a, a bit of an asshole. As he turned to a life of crime, killed dozens of innocent people, granting him the nickname the Hundred Man Killer. And he's like, hey, whatever, man. Killing people is fine. Until one day he kills someone, and it turns out it was his sister's husband. Whoops. His sister goes crazy, she becomes a vegetable. So he's like, well, shit, I guess, I guess this is, oh, I'm an idiot. So he gives up his life of crime, decides to take care of his uh, idiot sister. At some point, he meets this old lady who uh, who gives him the, these magical blood worms, which grant him immortality. Manji is now immortal, and it is very, very hard to kill him. Any wounds he receives will heal very instantly. That's a bunch of malarkey! including in, you know, vital places like his heart or his head. If he loses a limb, it can just simply be reattached. He's not completely invulnerable, but, you know, immortal sounds cool for a title. So, so, you know, he's immortal. Then his sister gets killed. So, uh, yikes. Numanji hates being immortal. He's like, okay, this sucks. I'm not getting any better with my sword play because I can just be reckless now when I fight people because, you know, I'll just heal all the time. And also, my sister is dead. I don't really have anything to live for. Hey, old lady, can you get rid of these magical blood worms? And she's like, now listen here, Sonny. Word around these parts is that you, you've been kind of a dick your whole life. You killed, uh, what? You kill, killed a hundred innocent people? That's cute. I'll remove those blood worms from you. No problem. As long as you kill, uh, 1,000 people who actually deserve it. So now Maji's on a quest to kill 1,000 assholes. Wasn't that a great synopsis of Blade of the Immortal? I, I did it. It's not over yet though, because then you have Rin come into play. Rin Asano is a 16-year-old orphan. Two years ago, her father ran a dojo. Everything was going well. He, he was teaching kids how to use swords, you know, it was it was all cool, life was fun. But then big baddie Anatsu came into town. Anatsu and his gang, the Itori. The Itoriu, Itoriu, I, the, the, this, this, this manga is full of crazy sounding Japanese names that I, I couldn't hope to try to pronounce, so, so bear with me. The Itoriu is a sword school led by this Anatsu fellow and they're kind of chads uh, and they want it so that they, they're pretty much the only sword school so they're on a quest to go into all the dojos and be like hey you you guys powerful enough you did you want to join us if not well we're gonna kill you and that's just what happens here Anotsu and his clan they wipe out Rin's family and now she's left all alone but and get this you're never gonna see this coming. She swears revenge on him. Yeah, Rin makes it her quest to uh, to take out Anatsu, take out the Atoryu all by herself because that's realistic. And she, she begins training herself. She begins learning how to throw daggers and that's about it. Then one day she meets the old lady, the same old lady who gave Manji the bloodworms. And she's like, hey, you're looking for someone to help you kill some bad guys? Well, I, I know just the dude. And she sends Rin to meet Manji. And Manji's like, hey, killing bad guys? Well, that's what I do now. So let's team up. Let's have a fun adventure. Let's take out these Atoru, you guys. And, and I'm sure nothing else will happen. That's Blade of the Immortal. <laughs> now, as with most revenge stories, it's not that simple, but I feel like giving away anything else about this plot will, will do a huge disservice to people who are planning on reading it. So we'll just leave it at that and talk about it. So Blade of the Immortal starts off pretty episodic. You have these tiny little story arcs, which usually involve um, Rin and Manji just, you know, traveling around, running into some Atoru guys, having, having a big, nice action scene, and then they, they move on to the next place, all in their goal to find an Otsu. It doesn't stay that way for long, though, because the plot really does not go in directions you expect, and we're quickly thrown into a much bigger story. We start to get some much more longer story arcs, a lot more complex ideas being thrown your way, and I have to say, this was, without a doubt, one of the best manga I have ever read. This was a goddamn 
masterpiece of a series. Blade's story is so engaging right off the bat. We instantly find out about Manji, about Rin. We understand what they want, we understand why they want it, and from there their journey is just so engaging. Even the early episodic stuff is fantastic. Like a lot of them are like almost like little short stories that could easily stand on their own. They're, they're wonderful. They run into all these fascinating characters, you know, you know, friend or foe, and it's really just some brilliant stuff. And they aren't just like filler. Like all of this stuff is important and, and a lot of it does come back into play later which I, I really really love. You know, this is a very fast paced series, it never gets boring, the action is so intense and exhilarating. It's 31 volumes, you would think sword fights would get a bit boring after a certain point. Well Samura is like, swords, what are those? <laughs> because some of the creativity of these fights, you know, for this time period are absolutely insane. People are using giant like chain sickles, we got stuff I don't even want to spoil, <laughs> it's, it's so insane. And Manji's immortality just adds this whole extra layer to the fights. Because like I mentioned earlier, he can be a lot more reckless than most people because he can just get in there. It doesn't matter if he gets cut. It doesn't matter if he gets stabbed through the heart. And for a while I was thinking, oh, this is just his thing. He, he's immortal. You know, cool. We're not really going to explore it anymore because that doesn't really matter to the story. But... <laughs> Oh boy was I wrong. Manji's immortality, how it works, and what it means for the world is a huge plot point in this story. And it leads to one of the best single manga arcs I have ever read. It adds whole new layers to the story, adds so many more amazing characters and moments. Despite that though, it's still not my favorite part of the story. My favorite part would have to be the final arc. Because this is such a non-stop like masterclass of action manga here. Everything about the story comes to a climax. All of the characters come together. It had such an incredible build up and the payoff was even better. Easily one of the best final arcs to a manga I have ever read, and the ending I found to be fully satisfying. All thanks, of course, to the fantastic cast of characters. Manji, our protagonist, is great. He has this really laid-back attitude. Uh, he doesn't always take things super seriously, which I think adds, you know, a nice ease of tension to some of the scenes in the series. I think it would have gotten a bit boring if Manji was like some super gritty, you know, dark guy with no personality, so I really do appreciate how much thought was given to his character. His relationship with Rin is so fantastic because they're together for, you know, like a good chunk of the story and the development they go through together is, is so fantastic. Rin starts off very naive. She's trying to take down like this giant organization of extremely skilled samurai all by herself. You know, she's a dumbass. And when Manji's with her, he's like, you know, you can't do this on your own. You're insane. And she's like, no, f fuck off. I, I train myself. And he's like, no. <laughs> no. So, you know, obviously a lot of character growth to be had, and it's it's all done so, so well. Anotu serves as our main antagonist, but I wouldn't call him a villain. And, and that's one of the things I love about Blade so much. All of these characters, whether they be on the protagonist side, on an opposing side, on, on another opposing side, it's hard to call any of these characters villains because everything about them can be so morally gray. I mean, you look at Manji, he's the protagonist, the guy we root for. I I mean, he's, he's awful. He's killed so many innocent people in the past. So in a way, this serves as a redemption story for him. And you have people like Anotu who, you know, they, they set up from the very beginning as being the worst. Like, he killed Rin's family. But the series spends a surprising amount of time on Anotu's character. And while you learn more and more about him, you, you start to, to feel for the guy. He becomes very sympathetic. I mean, it definitely doesn't excuse the horrible things he's done, but you understand why he does them. And that's what is so brilliant about all of the characters in this series. They all have their reasons to do things, they all have their reasons to oppose certain people, and it's all executed very, very well. Obviously, there's so many more great characters to talk about. You have Magatsu, who is another member of the Itoryu. So good. <laughs> He's such, such a good character. He plays off with Manji extremely well. I, I specifically love seeing the two of them together. Another character introduced early on is Hyakurin. She, she's another, uh, well, I, I don't really want to give away who many of these people are, but she was another fantastic character. I think, like, the, the first, like, big story arc to focus on her is also one of the best moments in the series. So yeah, this masterful story is really, really rounded out super well with this excellent cast of super well-developed characters. And honestly, some of my favorites in all of manga. But I haven't even mentioned the art yet. Oh, oh my god. Samura is, is god tier. This dude is an artist, right? I mean, yeah, every mangaka is an artist, but this guy creates 
art. Blade of the Immortal is easily one of the most unique and gorgeous manga I've ever looked at. He has a very unique style in that it's very sketchy, you know, like a lot, a lot of small lines everywhere. But when he goes hard, man, oh, holy crap. Especially like in the later parts of the series, like my jaw was dropping at some of the art on display here. And all of the best art, all of the most breathtaking moments are always saved for the action scenes. I've read a lot of action manga, like a, a lot of action manga, probably 80% of all the manga I've ever read. I think this series has the best action scenes I've ever seen. Seriously, no one does flow, no one does choreography quite like this. The action scenes here are so detailed, so fluid. It somehow felt like I was watching something animated. Like, th that's how good it is. It's so easy to follow, such a blast to read, so, so intense. This is a very, very gory manga. And you just feel every sword slash, every punch, every puncture. Even, like, does experiments with the paneling. Like, there are a lot of moments where, you know, like, the final blow will just be this gorgeous, like, double-page artistic spread. There are some scenes where there's just, like, all these tiny panels which detail the whole fight, all the choreography. <laughs> so, so, so cool. It just all this interesting stuff. It makes it so much fun to read. The art just really complements the story so well because it's so fascinating pace and exciting and engaging. There you have it. There's my review. Honestly, nothing but amazing things to say about this one. 10 out of 10. Of course. Of course. A slight warning though, this definitely isn't a series for everyone. Some very dark themes here, very touchy subject matter. If you don't mind, you know, extreme violence, sexual assault, stuff like that, then yeah, yeah, go for it. The series is amazing. But but do be cautioned going into this. Like, at least know what you're getting into here. There you have it. I finally reviewed Blade. It's been, like, what, three years since I started collecting it? And you should collect it, too! <laughs> if only it were that easy. So Blade of the Immortal uh, was originally released in 31 singles from Dark Horse over the years. They've come and gone out of print. Most of them are out of print now and pretty hard to find. And just recently, over the past few years, they've been releasing these uh, three-in-one omnibuses. Really nice quality. Really enjoy these. Great big pages to see this beautiful action on, but despite being much newer, these also struggle to stay in print, and they've been falling in and out of print for a few years now, even the brand newest ones. And I'm sure most of you heard, but uh, recently, Dark Horse actually announced they're going to be doing a 3-in-1 hardcover edition. What do you, uh, Dark Horse, oh, I hate Dark Horse so much. Why would you, you literally just finished releasing the series. Why would you start another edition like this so soon? <laughs> this is like such a slap in the face to people like me who spent like hundreds of dollars collecting this over the years. Oh my God. Oh man, they look ugly too. Like look, look at it, like why, why would you? <laughs> so yeah, buy Blade if you can. I mean, I'm gonna be, be a bit biased here, but preferably secondhand, so so Dark Horse doesn't get any money, cause fuck them. But yeah, despite all the fuckery going on with its publishing, it's definitely a series that you gotta read. There have been two anime series, and we're not gonna talk about either of them. Fuck them. Of course, there's been a live action movie. Why wouldn't there be? I have heard this is actually one of the better ones though. So, you know, it might be worth checking out. For alternate recommendations, if you like Blade of the Immortal, I'll recommend Vinland Saga, which is, you know, another revenge story, but like Blade, there, there's much more to it than just that. Also, fantastic art, characters, the works, you know. What else? What else? Parasite? Sure. Read Parasite. That's good. They, they don't really have much in common, but, you know, read Parasite. So that'll do it. Thank you all so much for watching. You can leave your thoughts on Blade of the Immortal and this review in the comments below. And I will see you guys soon because we have another samurai series to talk about.